Welcome, listeners. I hope you're still enjoying your holiday break, right? Recovering from food, drinks, and laughing too much? Dare I say I still am, that's for sure. Today I have part one of the creepypasta titled Psychosis. I have had many, 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 many requests for this one and wanted to tackle this one this week. This is part one for a reason because I haven't had the chance to edit part two. So because I hate keeping all of you waiting, I've edited the first part and will be uploading part two tomorrow. It is already recorded, but I need to whip it into audible shape before it hits your lovely ears. So, turn off the lights, grab yourself the mightiest of hot beverages, turn the sound up, and get ready for something different. Sunday. I'm not sure why I'm writing this down on paper, and not on my computer. I guess I've just noticed some odd things. It's not that I don't trust the computer, I just need to organize my thoughts. I need to get down all the details somewhere objective, somewhere I know that what I write can't be deleted or changed. Not that that's happened. It's just everything blurs together here, and the fog of memory lends a strange cast to things. I started to feel cramped in this small apartment. Maybe that's the problem. I just had to go and choose the cheapest apartment, the only one in the basement. The lack of windows down here makes day and night seem to slip by seamlessly. I haven't been out in a few days because I've been working on this programming project so intensively. I suppose I just wanted to get it done. Hours of sitting and staring at a monitor can make anyone feel strange. I know, but I don't think that's it. I'm not sure when it first started to feel like something was odd. I can't even define what it is. Maybe I just haven't talked to anyone in a while. That's the first thing that crept up on me. Everyone I normally talk to online, while I program, has been idle. Or they've simply not logged on at all. My instant messages go unanswered. The last email I got from anybody was a friend saying he'd talk to me when he got back from the store. And that was yesterday. I'd call with my cell phone, but reception's terrible down here. Yeah. That's it. I just need to call someone. I'm going to go outside. Well, that didn't work so well. As the tingle of fear fades, I'm feeling a little ridiculous for being scared at all. I looked in the mirror before I went out, but I didn't shave the two-day stubble I've grown. I figured I was just going out for a quick cell phone call. I did change my shirt though, and I'd guess that I'd run into at least one person I knew. That didn't end up happening. I wish it did. When I went out, I opened the door to my small apartment slowly. A small feeling of apprehension had somehow already lodged itself in me, for some indefinable reason. I chalked it up to having not spoken to anyone but myself for a day or two. I peered down the dingy grey hallway, made dingier by the fact that it was a basement hallway. On one end, a large metal door led to the building's furnace room. It was locked, of course. Two dreary soda machines stood by it. I bought a soda from one the first day I moved in, but it had a two-year-old expiration date. I'm fairly sure nobody knows those machines are even down here, or my cheap landlady just doesn't care to get them restocked. I closed my door softly and walked the other direction, taking care not to make a sound. I have no idea why I chose to do that, but it was fun giving in to the strange impulse not to break the droning hum of the soda machines, at least for the moment. I got to the stairwell and took the stairs up to the building's front door. I looked through the heavy door's small square window and received quite the shock. It was definitely not lunchtime. City gloom hung over the dark street outside and the traffic lights at the intersection in the distance blink yellow. Dim clouds, purple and black, from the glow of the city hung overhead. Nothing moved, save the few sidewalk trees that shifted in the wind. I remember shivering, though I wasn't cold. Maybe it was the wind outside. I could vaguely hear it through the heavy metal door, 
and I knew it was that unique kind of late night wind, the kind that was constant, cold and quiet, save for the rhythmic music it made as it passed through countless unseen tree leaves. I decided not to go outside. Instead, I lifted my cell phone to the door's little window and checked the signal meter. The bars filled up the meter and I smiled. Time to hear someone else's voice, I remember thinking, relieved. It was a strange thing to be afraid of nothing. I shook my head, laughing at myself silently. <laughs> I hit speed dial for my best friend Amy's number and held the phone up to my ear. It rang once, but then it stopped. Nothing happened. I listened to silence for a good 20 seconds, then hung up. I frowned and looked at the signal meter again, still full. I went to dial her number again, but then my phone rang in my hand, startling me. I put it up to my ear. Hello? I asked, immediately fighting down a small shock at hearing the first spoken voice in days, even if it was my own. I had gotten used to the droning hum of the building's inner workings, my computer, and the soda machines in the hallway. There was no response to my greeting at first, but then, finally, a voice came. Hey, said a clear male voice, obviously of college age, like me. Who's this? John, I replied, confused. Oh, sorry, wrong number. He replied, then hung up. I lowered the phone slowly and leaned against the thick brick wall of the staircase. That was strange. I looked at my received call list, but the number was unfamiliar. Before I could think on it further, the phone rang loudly, shocking me yet again. This time, I looked at the caller before I answered. It was another unfamiliar number. This time, I held the phone up to my ear but said nothing. I heard nothing but the general background noise of a phone. Then, a familiar voice broke my tension. John? Was the single word in Amy's voice. I breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, hey, it's you, I replied. Who else would it be? She responded. Oh, the number. I'm at a party on 7th Street and my phone died just as you called me. This is someone else's phone, obviously. Oh, okay, I said. Where are you? She asked. My eyes glanced over the drab whitewashed cylinder block walls and the heavy metal doors with its small window. <sighs> At my building, I sighed, just feeling cooped up. I didn't realize it was so late. <laughs> you should come here, she said, laughing. Nah, I don't feel like looking for some strange place by myself in the middle of the night, I said, looking out the window at the silent, windy street that secretly scared me just a tiny bit. I think I'm just going to keep working or go to bed. Nonsense, she replied. I could come get you. Your building is close to 7th Street, right? How drunk are you? I asked lightheartedly. You know where I live. Oh, of course, she said abruptly. I guess I can't get there by walking, huh? You could if you wanted to waste half an hour, I told her. Right, she said. Okay, have to go. Good luck with your work. I lowered the phone once more, looking at the numbers flash as the call ended. Then, the droning silence suddenly reasserted itself in my ears. The two strange calls and the eerie street outside just drove home my aloneness in this empty stairwell. Perhaps from having seen too many scary movies, I had the sudden inexplicable idea that something could look in the door's window and see me. Some sort of horrible entity that hovered at the edge of aloneness, just waiting to creep up on unsuspecting people that strayed too far from other human beings. I knew the fear was irrational. But nobody else was around. So, I jumped down the stairs, ran down the hallway into my room, and closed the door as swiftly as I could while still staying silent. Like I said, I feel a little ridiculous for being scared of nothing, and the fear has already faded. 
Writing this down helps a lot. It makes me realize that nothing is wrong. It filters out half-formed thoughts and fears and leaves only cold, hard facts. It's late. I got a call from a wrong number and Amy's phone died. So she called me back from another number. Nothing strange is happening. Still, there was something a little off about that conversation. I know it could have just been the alcohol she had, or was it even her that seemed off to me? Or was it? Yes, that was it. I didn't realize it until this moment, writing these things down. I knew writing things down would help. She said she was at a party, but I only heard silence in the background. Of course, that doesn't mean anything in particular, as she could have gone outside to make the call. No, that couldn't be it either. I didn't hear the wind. I need to see if the wind is still blowing. Monday I forgot to finish writing last night. I'm not sure what I expected to see when I ran up the stairwell and looked at the heavy metal door's window. I'm feeling ridiculous. Last night's fear seems hazy and unreasonable to me now. I can't wait to get out into the sunlight. I'm going to check my email, shave, shower, and finally get out of here. Wait, I think I heard something. It was thunder. The whole sunlight and fresh air thing didn't happen. I went out into the stairwell and up the stairs, only to find disappointment. The heavy metal door's little window showed only flowing water as torrential rain slammed against it. Only a very dim, gloomy light filtered in through the rain. But at least I knew it was daytime, even if it was a grey sickly wet day. I tried looking out the window and waiting for lightning to illuminate the gloom. But the rain was too heavy and I couldn't make out anything more than vague weird shapes moving at odd angles in the waves washing down the window. Disappointed, I turned around, but I didn't want to go back to my room. Instead, I wandered further up the stairs past the first floor and the second. The stairs ended at the third floor, the highest floor in the building. I looked through the glass that ran up the outer wall of the stairwell, but it was that warped, thick kind that scatters the light. Not that there was much to see through the rain to begin with. I opened the stairwell door and wandered down the hallway. The ten or so thick wooden doors, painted blue a long time ago, were all closed. I listened as I walked, but it was the middle of the day, so I wasn't surprised that I heard nothing but the rain outside. As I stood there in a dim hallway, listening to the rain, I had the strange, fleeting impression that the doors were standing like silent granite monoliths erected by some ancient forgotten civilization for some unfathomable guardian purpose. Lightning flashed, and I could have sworn that, for just a moment, the old grainy blue wood looked just like rough stone. <laughs> I laughed at myself for letting my imagination get the best of me. But then it occurred to me that the dim gloom and lightning must mean there was a window somewhere in the hallway, a vague memory surfaced, and I suddenly recalled that the third floor had an alcove and an inset window halfway down the floor's hallway. Excited to look out into the rain and possibly see another human being, I quickly walked over to the alcove, finding the large thin glass window. Rain washed down it, as with the front door's window, but I couldn't open this one. I reached a hand out to slide it open, but hesitated. I had the strangest feeling that if I opened that window, I would see something absolutely horrifying on the other side. Everything's been so odd lately, so I came up with a plan, and I came back here to get what I needed. I don't seriously think anything will come of it, but I'm bored. It's raining, and I'm going stir crazy. I came back to get my webcam. The cord isn't long enough to reach the third floor by any means, so instead, I'm going to hide it between the two soda machines in the dark end of my basement hallway, run the wire along the wall and under my door, and put black duct tape 
over the wire to blend it in with the black plastic strip that runs along the base of the hallway's walls. I know this is silly, but I don't have anything better to do. Well, nothing happened. I propped open the hallway to stairwell door, steeled myself, then flung the heavy front door wide open and ran like hell down the stairs to my room and slammed the door. I watched the webcam on my computer intently, seeing the hallway outside my door and most of the stairwell. I'm watching it right now, and I don't see anything interesting. I just wish the camera's position was different so that I could see at the front door. Hey, somebody's online. I got out an older, less functional webcam that I had in my closet to video chat with my friends online. I couldn't really explain to him why I wanted to video chat, but it felt good to see another person's face. He couldn't talk very long, and we didn't talk about anything meaningful, but I felt much better. My strange fear has almost passed. I would feel completely better, but there was something odd about our conversation. I know that I've said that everything has seemed odd, but still. He was very vague in his responses. I can't recall one specific thing he'd said. No, no particular name or place or event. But he did ask for my email address to keep in touch. Wait, I just got an email. I'm about to go out. I just got an email from Amy that asked me to meet her for dinner at the place we usually go to. I do love pizza, and I've just been eating random food from my poorly stocked fridge for days, so I can't wait. Again, I feel ridiculous about the odd couple of days I've been having. I should destroy this journal when I get back. Oh, another email. Oh my god. I almost left the email and opened the door. I almost opened the door. I almost opened the door, but I read the email first. It was from a friend I hadn't heard from in a long time. And it was sent to a huge number of emails that must have been every person he has saved in his address list. It had no subject, and it said simply, Seen with your eyes, don't trust them, they. What the hell is that supposed to mean? The words shock me, and I keep going over and over them. Is it a desperate email sent just as, something happened? The words are obviously cut off, without finishing. On any other day, I would have dismissed this as spam, from a computer virus or something, but the words, seen with your own eyes. I can't help but read this journal and think back on the last few days and realize that I have not seen another person with my own eyes or talked to another person face to face. The webcam conversation with my friend was so strange, so vague, so eerie, now that I think about it. Was it eerie? Or is the fear clouding my memory? My mind toys with the progression of events I've written here, pointing out that I have not been presented with one single fact that I did not specifically give out, unsuspectingly. The random wrong number that got my name and the subsequent strange return call from Amy, the friend that asked for my email address. I messaged him first when I saw him online, and then I got my first email a few minutes after that conversation. Oh my god! The phone call with Amy. I said over the phone, I said that I was within half an hour's walk of 7th Street. They know I'm near here. What? If they're trying to find me, where is everyone else? Why haven't I seen or heard anyone in days? No, no, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I need to calm down. This madness needs to end. I don't know what to think. I ran about my apartment furiously, holding my cell phone up to every corner to see if it got a signal through the heavy walls. Finally, in the tiny bathroom near one ceiling corner, I got a single bar. Holding my phone there, I sent a text to every number in my list, not wanting to betray anything about my unfounded fears. I simply sent, 
You seen anyone face to face lately? At that point, I just wanted any reply back. I didn't care what the reply was, or if I embarrassed myself. I tried to call someone a few times, but I couldn't get my head up high enough. And if I brought my cell phone down even an inch, it lost signal. Then, I remembered the computer, and rushed over to it, instant messaging everyone online. Most were idle or away from their computer. Nobody responded. My messages grew more frantic, and I started telling people where I was and to stop by in person for a host of barely passable reasons. I didn't care about anything by that point. I just needed to see another person. I also tore apart my apartment looking for something that I might have missed. Some way to contact another human being without opening the door. I know it's crazy. I know it's unfounded, but what if? What if? I just needed to be sure. I taped the phone to the ceiling just in case. And this ends part one of Psychosis. No, oh, I know, I know. I have left you on a cliffhanger. Rest assured, all will be revealed tomorrow. If any of you want to guess how it turns out, by all means, without reading the creepypasta, of course, let me know. You can comment directly here on SoundCloud, email me at storiesfablesghostlytales at gmail.com, or even reach me on my website. On that note, if you haven't had a chance to check out my website, swing on by. I've got the link in my episode notes. Or you can search Stories Fables Podcast in Google, and boom, I should be there. It's a great way to have your friends and family listen to the channel without logging into anything at all. Nothing. It's why I put it up there, because I totally understand that not everyone wants to use a podcast app or give out their details. It's also the place where you'll be able to email me using a contact form. So it's super easy. And yes, listeners, it is that time. This is the place where stories live, and you telltellers come to listen. Enjoy your day or night, and join me every weekday for our creepy tradition. And as always, till next time.